Hello and welcome to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Bureau of Labor Statistics API in R. The Bureau of Labor Statistics, also known as BLS, is a government agency in the United States that reports on public data regarding employment, inflation, prices, etc. So it's a great resource for public data and for personal projects. So this website actually does have its own API. So all you need to do is log into the main page of the website, bls.gov, go into the data tools, and then go into the public data API. This will give you some information on how to get started with the public data API. Now your main concern is you want to register for this API because the uh, version that requires registration, which is version 2.0, gives you a lot more access than the regular version, which does not require registration. So click on the registration button over here and it's gonna ask for your organization name and email address. All you need to do is just type in self for your organization name and then type in your personal email address, uh, agree to the terms of service and submit a registration and they're gonna send you your API key in an email. So that's how you get registered for the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics API. There are some resources here on the side that you can always check out such as sample code FAQs and the signatures, which give you more information on how to actually make these requests. Uh, however, we won't necessarily need to review any of these in this video because I'll be walking you through all of that. And just a quick look at the FAQ section, just uh, wanted to explain to you some of the limitations that come with this API. The limitation is that you can only run 500 queries um, every day and you can run 50 series every day. So a series is essentially a data set. Uh, and then the maximum uh, year limitation that you could use is 20 years per query. Um, so that could also be a limitation, especially that some of these data sets uh, can span for a lot more than 20 years. So it may require you to have to run these over and over with different uh, year ranges. So that's just a quick explanation of the uh, limitations and the features of the API. So without further ado, let's jump into the R code. All right, the first thing we need to do is load the necessary packages. So the HTTR package will allow us to make those API calls. The tidyverse is just used for data wrangling and data manipulation. And then the glue package is going to help us uh, smartly concatenate strings. And this will we will need this whenever we are embedding the API key into the JSON request. So I'm gonna highlight these libraries and run them. Next, what I need to do is I will insert my API key. Now this is the key that they sent to you by email after you register. So I'm going to create a variable called API key and I'm going to put my API key in here. Now, of course, I will run this off screen uh, and just for security purposes, don't share your API key with anybody because if anyone has access to your API key, they can make requests on your end and you don't want that. So I will run this off screen and I'll be back. Okay, so I ran it and now we can move to the next step, which is the API URL. So usually when you're trying to communicate with an API, there will usually be a starting URL that you use to extract that data from. So in this case, we can find that through the uh, signatures. So if we go through the signatures, it should give you the URL over here. And that is the URL that we're going to need. So I will copy it and I will create a URL object. Okay, next I will create the payload body. This is essentially the JSON request that we will be using. And this is what we're gonna pass into this uh, URL to specify the data that we're looking for and the start year and the end year and, and all of that. All right, so in order to write the JSON request in here, we're going to need a couple of parameters and one of them is the series ID. The series ID is essentially the ID that identifies the table that we're looking for. So in order to find the series IDs for specific tables, we can go back into the Bureau of Labor Statistics and I'm going to go into Data Finder. And let's say, for example, I'm interested in looking at a data set for the price of eggs. So I'm just going to type in eggs in here and I'm going to click on the very first one, which says eggs uh, grade A large per dozen in U.S. city average. So when I click on that, it's going to give you all of this data. It's going to give you a graph that shows you uh, the prices over time. And essentially what we're looking for here is the series ID. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy it. And that's what we're going to need for uh, the first parameter of our JSON request. So I'm going to open up a single quotation with the curly bracket. And then I'm going to type in my first um, key value pair, which is series ID. And I'm going to put a colon 
open a list and I'm going to open up another uh, double quotation and I'm going to pa paste in my uh, series ID. And then next, what I want to do is I want to specify the start year. So I will say start year. Uh, now keep in mind for this one, we can only use a maximum of 20 years. So I'm going to just start with uh, 2005. And I will run this until 2023. So there we go. And now we need to pass in the API key. And now we need to pass in the API key. So I will use the registration key. And that we're going to have to set that equals to the API key. So this is where I will use the uh, glue function to type it in. So I'm going to use a double uh, curly bracket and I'm going to type in API key. And this is just to indicate to the glue function that I want to pass in the API key variable into this JSON request. And then I want to just close off the bracket and I will enclose this all in a glue function. And then for the glue function, I will change the um, I will change the open parameter and set it equals to the uh, double open quotation, a double open uh, curly bracket, and then the close equals to a double close curly bracket. And the reason why I did this is because by default, the glue function uh, uses a single curly bracket as the opening and closing. Uh, but given that we need it for our JSON request, so we need to explicitly create a new opening and closing. So it, it could essentially be any other characters that you'd like, but I figured this would be the easiest. I'm going to save this in a object called payload, and I will run it. Okay. Now, uh, since that since we're trying to get the data uh, in this format, uh, the BLS specifies that we need to use a post request. So in order to do this, I will create an object called response and set it equals to post. And this is going to take multiple variables. So the first one it's going to take is the URL. So that will be the beginning URL. Next, we're going to take the uh, payload object. So that will be the, um, I will believe it is the uh, body. So the body would be the payload. Oh, it would be the payload. And then for the third parameter, I want to use the content type application slash JSON. And this is uh, specified over here in the documentation where it tells you that the header is the content type equals application uh, slash JSON. And then the last parameter will be the encode. And we're going to set that equals to JSON. So if we were to run that, it creates our response request. Uh, now, of course, there isn't really anything interesting to look at just yet because uh, we need to do some conversion to it. So now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this response and convert it into a list. So I'll create an object called X and I will use the content function where it will take in the response and and return it to us as a text. And then next I will use the JSON light package and I will use the from JSON function. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, take the response and then convert it uh, from JSON into a list. So I will run this. And then if I take a view of that, it says that the request has failed. I was supposed to surround this by double quotation. So I will go ahead and run this, and then rerun the response, and then rerun the um, X variable. And then I will now view the X variable. And it says that the request has succeeded. Uh, so now what this does is now you have this uh, list object and the data is stored in the results, in the series, and in, in the data. So that's where the um, data is stored for us. Um, so in order to access the data, we're going to just type in uh, the X, um, look at the results, type in another dollar sign, type in series, and then type in data. And then I'm going to just uh, convert this into a tibble. So if I were to look at this, um, it says that the prepared names column one must be named. Oh, so of course I have to actually, since this is in a list, I'm going to have to actually specify this um, as the first parameter. And then I will just say as tibble. 
And then what this is going to do is it's going to uh, print out the data frame for us of all of the values um, starting from uh, what well, it looks like it's starting in um, backwards order. So starting from latest to oldest uh, and it has all of the uh, values in here. So that's a very uh, simple way of of uh, of collecting the data. Of course, you could run multiple series in here and then you can access it based on the index over here. And yeah, that's how you work with the BLS API. Thank you for watching.